Good morning, everybody. I'm Patrick Duffy, and I'm very excited to be back again in the beautiful NASDAQ studios overlooking Times Square in New York City. It's an incredible sunny day. Today is part nine of our series, Future Thinker, that runs in tandem with Design Pavilion, an annual event celebrating design and architecture in the heart of New York City's Times Square during the NYC by Design Festival. Our series explores how agents of change, disruptors, and leaders in the design industry will shape tomorrow and what they're doing today to make a positive impact on people and planet. My next guest is an Italian architect and designer based in New York City. He has designed buildings, monuments, and products that can be found in the permanent collections of the Centre Pompidou in Paris, the Brooklyn Museum, Modern Museum of Art and Design in New York, the Lachlan Museum in Los Angeles and the Moss Museum in Sydney. So there's a big list of credentials I screwed up there a little bit. He has also designed The Guardian's two beautiful sculptures which sit permanently at the entrance of Bryant Park just around the corner in New York City. It is my pleasure to welcome dear friend and exceptional architect Antonio Pio Saracino. Thank welcome you. Antonio. Thank you Pali, for having me. Excuse me for screwing up that long oh, list of wonderful <laughs> credentials that you have there. I'm so excited that you're here with us. So you are an expert on design and you're an expert on making things beautiful. So can you tell me a little bit about, from your perspective, what is outstanding design? Well, outstanding design is, um, um, in a classical way of thinking, is always like the perfect balance between function, form, and needs, mm -hmm. and what functional needs are. That was the classical definition, but today, you know, we inspired also about what are you doing, sustainability, it's very important to rethink that and understanding that it's not only the collection, the balance between function, form, and the value that any, anything we design is bringing to us, but also the connection with nature, because we are part of that, and mm -hmm. so we have to rethink our position in that, and so it's very important to think that every material that we use should have its origin to nature and how we use that material because they're not endless. So you're inspired by nature, obviously. Well, every design, I mean, we, we always like extract material from nature. We have to recreate, reorganize them and, and put them in a different order. That's what we do. We always have done that. How do you integrate nature into what you're doing? Well, I mean, from an organizational perspective, not only like mimicking what nature, uh, you know, from a, a, a formal perspective, but also an organizational perspective, like designing things that look like, almost like nature would have designed it. That's what I think. It's like something we do should be in echo with nature to have the perfect uh, synteny. What is it about nature that inspires you with, with your designs? Tell me, like, specifically. Well, I, I feel like um, we have to rethink our position in nature okay. because it's always been like uh, uh, in the past years during modernity, we always have built an environment where um, we were placing ourselves in at the center of a world we build with machines, we control it. But even the machine today, they're becoming so complex and complicated and uh, they're reacting with us in a seamless way that almost we are rethinking the position. We are no more at the center. We are almost like object of the machine we're building. Mm. And we are also at the same time rethinking the way we were thinking inside nature. So mm. we are blurring and we are part of nature. We have to rethink when we design something in nature, that position. Yeah. And people like you that really devote their life to this cause, it's really impressive because uh, inspire people, new generation to um, think their position. That's all it is. Create a new awareness that then shift politician and corporation to rethink the way we, we create our design industry. I love that you have a completely holistic view about your design and it's amazing because many times when you talk to designers and architects, they don't have that view. So it's amazing that you can do that. One thing that I really love about what you do is you, you, you do a lot with reuse, don't you, with your designs? Yeah, I mean, it's important to rethink how uh, reuse material yeah. or actually look at material and, and announce the way the origin come from nature without really hiding it. And so it's very important that the smart use of material in, and in a perfect balance in the final result of the product. Itself. Are there materials that you're finding now that are um, modern and exciting that are less impactful on the environment that you're integrating into your work? Well, I mean, yes, there are some material that in architecture and design they're um, used and they are much more uh, in connection with nature than others. Mm -hmm. So definitely. What do you like? What? Where do you get the inspiration for your projects? You have these two incredible guardians that are sitting right around the corner here. Where do things like that come from? The monuments that you've designed for museums, United Nations projects. Like, where do you get the inspiration to do these things that have incredible messaging attached? Yeah, in the specific, the guardians was a, a message to that was resonating with also like um, 
a sense of continuity from history because uh, at the time the, there was one sculpture was a gift of the Italian government to New York symbolic gift and so uh, they asked me to design a new David and so there was like a, such a, a <laughs> there's a lot of cultural significance <laughs> exactly <to that. laughs> so, the idea of this getting like, asked to redesign the David wow. exactly so no it was a fun uh, experience and the idea was like to bring this message from the past of a hero that is inspiring generation but at the same time I thought that there was such a continuity because a hero from the past is not other than a superhero in our pop American culture and in New York that was sort of have inspired superhuman um, um, thinking I felt there was not a monument that was celebrating that with all the movies they've done about superheroes so I felt there was that connection how can you with you do with, with, with what you do in architecture how are you using that to educate people and how or, and maybe not specifically to what you do but how can you use architecture and de design to educate people on on uh, sustainability or um, living better well I mean I think like in my specific like that I do architecture and design and, and also like public art um, I think public art is a great tool that inspire people not only from some perspective that you're looking at but also from the perspective that uh, something that you experience with that's what I'm working on more integrating different uh, aspect more immersive with technologies and other aspect in uh, some current uh, monument project I'm working on where you can create more an experience of people into the whole design yeah. aspect and um, you know, I always like, I, I, creative people have challenges. I'm a creative person myself. So could you give a little bit of insight to us about some of the challenges that you've overcome to, for, your, for creating um, some of your beautiful projects? I think it was... Uh, Sorry to put you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> this is live. This is live. No, I, I think like that was... Um, um, I remember one of my clients, <clears throat> he was interviewed by my work mm -hmm. and I saw that in retrospective and he's so the one that actually chose me to the competition for the Guardians and they told uh, and I saw that interview and they really inspired me because they say that w they choose my work because um, they show they saw my passion mm -hmm. they saw my passion and and how much I believed in the vision that I wanted to create that it was tangible and and then they felt so compelled that they wanted to build my vision mm. so my advice is like to really be passionate and and really be uh, immersed in what you're dreaming that make people believe before you're actually building it yeah i love that answer so we we as climate change is something that is on everybody's lips right now we just interviewed the um, director of the united nations uh, u.n environment here as an architect you are designing for many people and you're designing spaces so what is your vision for the future? What, how, how are we going to live in spaces? Have you, have you thought about something like this? Where, how are people going to live and what's that going to look like through your eyes? Well, definitely technology is playing a big role. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the way we communicate today, uh, technology is a big filter between that and technology is really embedded into the material world that we're building every day with our uh, living experience, spatial, spatial experience. So that's one aspect. And then the other aspect, I think <clears throat> we are realizing more and more that material, they're not endless. Right. And so we have to think of how we are reusing what we already use. And, uh, and there are great companies that, and great engineers, they really make up new materials from reusing in a very smart way. And then also using material in a way that we feel where they come from. So we have much more respect. We don't feel like it's just like something white, green, black. It's something that we know it's coming from wood, from, from stone, from uh, um, certain aspect of nature. Mm. So I think that really will educate us to have much more respect from the material that they are part of our shell, the yeah. shell that is every day shelter ourselves from nature itself. Like, it's almost like you're talking about, we talk about a lot, this a lot, and I work within the fashion industry, the transparency aspect of things, and being able to know where your home came from or know where your building exactly. came from is, super, is very important. Antonio, what kind of projects are you working on now? How, what are you looking towards towards the future? Yeah, right now I'm working on an interesting development, uh, 150 apartment, where I create this uh, 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 three buildings and they are talking to each other with this like tectonic shifting of floors just like a stone shifting oh, wow. so really inspired by nature in there and then working on some residential project and as well some new monuments and mm. 
Uh, new monument. <laughs> new monument. Can you give us a little insight as to <laughs> I, where? I, can, I just won this competition, so I can really Which talk What did you win? <laughs> what did you win? <laughs> it's, uh, it's for a town very close here to New York. Okay. And uh, so I, I, I can't really talk about okay, it. But, okay, okay, okay. But we'll be soon. I'm not going to ask you the tough unveiled. questions. Unveiled. <laughs> we'll be unveiled very soon. I'm so. <laughs> not going to ask you the Oprah questions. Thank you so much for thank coming you, to join us you, today. Thank you, thank you, Patrick. I could talk to you all day. You are just such a joy. And thank he's you. such an incredible person and architect. Thank you for coming to join us here at Future Thinker. Hope you enjoyed this conversation with myself and with Antonio Pio Saracino and myself. And we'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.